Hey, it's Joseph, and today I'm back to complain about your shadows again. It's not my fault. Been noticing something a little off, just a little off. Been seeing a lot of card-based designs that have a card in front of a background casting a shadow upon it, and that's fine. It's wonderful. It's great. But then there's another card overlapping that card and the background casting a shadow onto both. Now the problem is, if this card is in front of the background and casting a shadow, and this card is in front of this card casting a shadow, then how is this shadow the same on this card and the background that's behind it? It's sort of one flat shadow, which is really weird when you tilt it at an angle, you could see how physically impossible this is. The shadow cast upon the second card should be a lesser elevation, so to speak, than the shadow cast upon the background behind that. And elevation is a term pulled directly from the Google Material Guidelines. And guess what? The Google Material Guidelines themselves show this as a best practice. What? Google, Google promoting this MC Escher shit. Maybe because it's easier programmatically, I'm sure, but it's time to push forward. You know, TVs used to be black and white. Michael Jackson used to be, you know, alive. Let's look at how to adjust our design practice and then engineering can catch up. Let's compare side by side what the problem looks like and what the solution should look like. You'll notice a difference in the shadow being cast upon the card versus the background behind it because they're at two different elevations. Let's take a look at how to pull this off in Sketch with the fewest number of steps possible. All right, so here we are in Sketch, and before we look at the problem or even the solution, let's first look at what elevation looks like visually. I've got these boxes here across the top, kind of demonstrating what something with a subtle amount of elevation lifted off the page in 3D space might look like, and then a little more, and then a little more, and then a little more. And you can tell by the shadow, and I've also nudged the position of these so that you can really tell that they're lifted up and out away from their background. And the idea is the further it moves out, the more the shadow becomes blurry, the more the shadow kind of lets light leak around it, and uh, the more the shadow distances itself from the object because the object is distancing itself from the background. So if I click on this, you can see my settings here. I've got an offset of 20 pixels vertically, and then I've got a blur of 25 and a spread of negative 10. Now, my second interval jumps from an offset of 20 to an offset of 40, and then 60, and then 80. But each time, I'm also increasing the blur, and I'm also decreasing the spread to a larger negative number. And the reason for decreasing the spread is that the shadow is getting smaller because presumably the object is getting bigger as it comes toward us in 3D space, but the shadow is on the background, and the background is staying the same distance from the camera. So I've got these kind of created as presets. I've also got them saved as uh, save styles here. And uh, this is a sketch file that you can download. You can either follow along or you can just use this to copy and paste the styles for your own use. And that way you won't have to reinvent the wheel when it comes to all these uh, shadow settings here. So let's go down and look at what the solution looks like. The solution shows that there is a soft, diffuse shadow where this is raised over the background. And then where this front box or square one, as we're going to call it, uh, overlap square two, uh, you could see here that there's a more direct shadow. So if we compare to our elevations up here, what we're really looking at is the back box has an elevation of 60. And then on top of that, there's another box, which is another 20 units of elevation uh, in front of the back box, which is why it's got that hard edge shadow there. Um, but as a result of that, the front box is 60 plus 20 elevation units from its background, and that makes it an elevation of 80. So it's actually using this on the background. The problem is that we've, uh, we've got uh, one object here, and we've, we're essentially generating two different shadows that need to show up in two different places. We need the hard shadow on the right and the soft shadow over here on the left, and uh, we don't want both to overlap uh, that, that dividing line in the middle. So let's go over to the problem. The problem being what we first looked at, we've got the elevation of 20 on this box all the way across. So uh, we've got a, a bit of a paradox here. We've got this guy at 60, and we've got this guy at 20, even though it's higher up than this. It's, uh, it's closer to us. So what we're gonna need to end up with is a sandwich of the box and two separate shadows. We've got the back shadow, the front shadow, and the box itself. 
uh, right now we just have the box with a shadow on it. So we're going to duplicate this twice. So I'm going to press Command D twice, and then we have square one, square one copy, and square one copy two. Um, I'm going to rename this first copy front shadow, and I'm going to rename this second copy back shadow. And back shadow has got to be all the way at the bottom because it's going to be behind square two. Front shadow needs to be behind square one, but on top of square two. And uh, really, neither one of these needs a fill. They're just going to be shadows. So I'm actually going to disable the fill there. You don't have to disable the fill, uh, but I just want to be able to show you guys real quick. If I turn off square one, you can see that there are just shadows behind it, right? Square one is now separate from its shadows. I also want to turn off the shadows on square one. Otherwise, I'll have three shadows instead of two. I'll have back shadow, front shadow, and then I'll have this other extra shadow coming from square one. So right now, square one does not have any shadow whatsoever. Now, this next part, this is really this is really where the trick in lies, and um, it's getting the front shadow to clip or be masked to the box behind it. So to accomplish that, I'm just going to select both layers, the square two, the one in the back, and the front shadow that's overlapping it, and then I'm going to do a right click or a two-finger click, and I'm going to find mask, and by clicking mask, now that front shadow uh, exists only within the bounds of this box. So to just quickly highlight what, that, what that's actually doing, I'm going to select the front shadow layer, I'm going to go over to shadows, and I'm going to make it a color. Uh, just make it blue so you can see. So the blue is only showing up on top of this because it's now masked. So I'm going to undo that because we don't want it to be blue um, and collapse it. It's our back shadow now that is wrong. And our back shadow is just at the wrong elevation. So again, I've, I've got these shared styles uh, and I can use these. Uh, the other thing I can do is increase the offset, increase the blur and decrease the spread. Uh, I'm just going to quickly choose my 80 unit elevation here to increase that elevation. And the other thing, the last thing, that that's really problem solved. The last thing you may want to consider is the fact that this is for this box number two here, which uh, is now called mask because it's behaving as a mask for that front shadow. Um, this box here is further from the alleged light source that's creating these shadows. And because of that, we may want to make it a little less bright. So right now it's currently white, I might want to go into a hue of blue because everything here is kind of in a hue of blue and just decrease the brightness just slightly, ever so slightly. Just have it land somewhere between the foreground and the background because um, the background's receiving light from the same light source as the foreground, but the light source falls off as things become increasingly distant. So now we have a proper card overlap going on. That's, that's now looking a lot better. We've got the hard shadow where we've got uh, a minor difference in elevation, and then we've got the soft shadow where we've got a major difference in elevation. That's it. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to head to LearnSketch.com to download that sketch file with the different elevations so that you can pull those shadows without having to recreate them from scratch. And if you enjoyed this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll have more great content coming soon.